Let's talk about the elephant in the room that people don't seem to be talking about. And that is, how did one person get to four victims at the University of Idaho? Let's get into it. How was one suspect able to get to four victims? without anybody being alerted or anybody hearing or seeing what was happening. That is mind blowing to me. So I decided to do a little impromptu video about this because I'm editing video for the crime scene that I'm getting ready to upload. And all I can keep thinking about is how did a suspect get to four people? Four people on two different floors. So how did, how did this suspect get to all four victims without anybody hearing or seeing what was happening? It just doesn't make sense. This house, I think if you look at this house, online it looks a lot bigger than it really is this house is less than 2200 square feet and it has six bedrooms and three bathrooms so it's a rental property it's basically an investment property that they built to rent to students going to the university of idaho so there's six bedrooms three bathrooms and two common areas which is the kitchen and the living room so this house is stacked on top of itself. But nobody heard people's lives being brutally taken in this house. That doesn't make sense to me at all. I feel like everybody who was in this house was aware of what was happening. I know that it was described as a party house and that there was a lot of yelling and screaming and people making noise but this is different in in reality we know the difference between when we're in danger and when we're not in danger you have that feeling and a lot of that has to do with sound so people you know the difference between someone yelling or a girl screaming at a party or a guy screaming at a party or whatever and somebody fighting for their life that is something that is very different and that's what was happening these people were fighting for their lives but nobody in the house heard what was happening now remember not only so remember the 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 two fir the first two victims if if these crimes happened the way that the it's been reported the first two victims are on the very top floor so there's four additional people in this house and out of those four people in this house not one of them heard what was going on on the top floor I mean, these victims were fighting for their lives. This had to be a very chaotic scene. If you're watching some of these reports, they make it sound like this guy just snuck up on these people in the middle of the night while they were peacefully sleeping. But we know that that's not the case because there were things happening. Food was being delivered. And, you know, Dylan thought that she heard Kaylee playing with her dog. So there was movement in this house. Not everybody was just tucked away sleeping. So that's where I get really confused is how, because it's almost set up, if this was one suspect, it's almost like ducks in a row. It's, it's, you know, if you follow the reports of how they believe this all unfolded, it's almost like the attacker went from one 
victim to the next, to the next, to the next. And I just don't believe that it was that organized. I feel like when people are fighting for their lives, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be screaming. There's going to be noise. There's going to be wrestling and it's going to be physical. I don't feel like, I, I just don't believe that these victims just laid there and waited for their attacker to take their lives without making any noise. I can't imagine that not only everybody in that house, but anybody around that house wouldn't hear something. You know, one of the previous tenants to that actually lived at 1122 King Road uh, in the 2020-2021 year, lived in that house, made a statement saying that you could always hear chatting through the vents. This house was known as a loud house. There was a lot of noise complaints against this house as we've seen in body cam footage from law enforcement. You know, these kids like to party. And I mean, you know, they're 21 year old college students. Of course they like to party. But this house made noise. And so it's hard to believe that on in the early morning hours of the 13th, that it wasn't a very chaotic scene and that it wasn't loud, that there was a lot of noise. It's a, it's a human instinct to detect if you're in danger or not. And so I just find it hard to believe that everyone in that house didn't realize that they were in danger, including the surviving roommates. It, it just doesn't make sense that that much could be going on. We're talking about four lives being taken with a sharp-edged blade. So you might be able to sneak up on the first one, but you're not going to sneak up on anybody after that if you're committing this crime with a sharp-edged blade. I just, I have a hard time believing that he just went from victim to victim to victim to victim and then just pranced out the back door. That just doesn't make sense in this, in, in, in the grand scheme of things. When you think about reality, think about that. The other four roommates had to hear what was going on on the top floor. So why didn't they react? Why didn't they run? Why didn't they call 911? Why, why didn't they do anything? And how were they both contained in two bedrooms? So two victims in one bedroom at, on the top level, and then two victims on the middle level, the second level, in another bedroom. That to me doesn't sound like people who are moving around this house. I feel like if people are losing their lives to, you know, to a sharp edged weapon, there's chaos. There's people moving around. It doesn't seem like they would be just in two separate bedrooms, just in two bedrooms. It's almost as if they were contained in these bedrooms. And we're going to talk more about that as well. But the noise, the noise is what I don't understand. Originally, when I first started following this story, that's what drew me to this story was the number of victims, that there was four victims. That's a tragedy. And then when they arrested Brian Koberger as the sole suspect, that's when I really had questions because that's when I was like, how, how did one person get to four people? I mean... People, the whole house had to have heard what was happening in this house. But nobody ran. Nobody called 911. Nobody reacted. So I don't understand how if there was a, if there was two victims in each room, that means that not only did everybody have to hear this, 
But two other people had to see what was happening to the other person in the room. But there was no screening or, I mean, we're talking about people fighting for their lives. Not just your normal scream. We're talking about desperation. We're talking about people fighting for their lives. So how did the whole house not hear this? You know, it just, it, it, it just kind of defies logic. And I think that that's why people have such a hard time believing a lot of these details that are coming out about this crime is because it kind of all started out kind of wonky. It all kind of started out where we're being told that there was four victims' lives taken in this house where there was six people inside and it was done with a sharp-edged weapon and nobody heard anything or saw anything. Nobody was alerted to this. And I, that raises a lot of red flags because that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense that the whole house didn't hear what was happening inside that house. I mean, they're stacked right on top of each other. I can't believe that the four roommates on the lower levels didn't hear what was happening right above them in a house where it was relatively quiet for a Saturday night. Everybody was in their rooms. So, you know, I was confused when I first heard that. It was, I was confused when I first heard that there was only one suspect that took the lives of four people. And I'm still just as confused now as I was back in December as to how these people did not know what was going on in their house. How do you not hear the sound? How would you not hear people fighting for their lives? That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I, you know, I, I, it, this is included in another video that I'm getting ready to upload about the crime scene. But I really just kind of wanted to jump on here and talk about this because it's something I've been thinking about while I've been editing this video. Because this is the same thing that drew me into this case. And now, in September, I'm still just as confused about how four people's lives were taken in a house where there were six people and nobody heard anything. No, in, including a dog barking. Nobody inside the house heard what was going on, was alerted to what was going on. So, because they weren't just sleeping peacefully in their, in their beds. They had to have heard this, in my opinion. It just, it seems, you know, this is why I think people are skeptical about the information that they're getting from, that, that's being reported about these crimes. Because it kind of started out in a really weird place where, how, how did nobody hear this? How did nobody inside this house not know what was going on? It just doesn't make sense, but look out for my next video. It's going to be all about the crime scene, and we're going to talk a little bit about the noise and stuff like that, but I just felt like I wanted to get on here and talk about this because it's something I've been thinking about since I started editing today, and it's really kind of the one thing that I've been thinking about throughout all of my research throughout this whole process, and it's there's... I'm still just as confused now as I was then. So if you have any ideas, maybe leave them in the comments and uh, watch out for my next video. Thank you.